Right, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belong to Yahweh, Mahasham, Yahweh Shai, Mahasham, Wahavaka Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Son's name is Yahweh Shai, in whom I reverence. And honors to the apostles that have in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning. All right. The importance of Yahabashai and his description. Because we know Yahabashai is what? Our Messiah, our Lord. So the most important thing is to know if you, if you have a Messiah, if you have a friend, you were going to know the description of your friend, how he looks, you were going to know his name, you were going to know everything about him. And basically, this is basics. All right, let's go to Proverbs 30, and we're going to start at verse 4. Okay. Who have ascended into heaven or descended right ascending means to what to rise and descended to come down right which you i did right after them three days who did he see what mary actually saw what you right appeared to mary and to the disciples right he was supping with them it tells us that in john right who have gathered the wind in his fists so Yes, we're going to go into it. Who have bound the waters in his garments? So the Most High, yes, and his son have a description, right? Because it mentions fists and it mentions garment. Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, right? And what is his son's name? So this is speaking of the Heavenly Father, God, who some of you ignorantly call God. And God is just a, a, a title, right? Just like Lord. Lord is just a title. Right? When I say the names, I like to say the names out. When I say Lord, I say Yahweh Yahabashai in capitals. Right? Then when you have Lord in non-capitals, it's Yahabashai. Right? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If canst thou tell. If thou can tell. So the names are important. The names are very important. Even though the scriptures do say not everyone that says Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the names are still important. Because you can't say you have a friend but you don't know his name or oh, what's his name? Oh, I don't know. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Okay. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Okay. If that's can tell. Every word of the Mosai is pure. There's nothing tainted about it. He is assured unto them that put their trust in him. Okay. So the main thing is. Your first thing, we've got to know his name. And now we know his name, we've got to go into what? The description. Alright. Go into Daniel's Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. Yes, the one you call God, he has a description. Okay. Go to Daniel 7 and 9. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. Of these different kingdoms and the ancient of days did sit and the thrones were cast down because when you go to daniels 2 and 44 it talks about all these kingdoms right and that stone that smote the image which that stone represents you have a shy right and the ancient of days did sit ancient of days referring to what the, some of you call him the most high some of you call him um i call i like to say the heavenly father and yahweh right the one you call God did sit. So the ancient of days, who you call God, he's sitting down. He's sitting. Right? Whose garment was white as snow. So yeah, the one you call God. And most Christians they say, well, he's um no, he's everywhere. He's in me, he's in you, he's in the animals, he's in the plants. I somewhat understand what they're saying because the most high is what did what did they call it? Omni omnipresent? Is it omnipresent? An omnipotent, omnipresent. Yeah, he is everywhere. But look, 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 look. God, he's he is a being. Right? He's everywhere. He sees everything, but he's a being. He has an image. Alright? So it says. Okay. Ancient of they did sit, so he's sitting down. And for you to sit down, that means you would have to have a body. He has a body, but it's an angelic body. 
right? It's not the same bodies that we have. Remember, there's one is ex extra extraterrestrial and there's terrestrial. Okay. His garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. So he wear the garment and it was white as snow. So he has a garment on, shows he also has a body. Right? And the hair of his head was like pure wool. White woolly hair. His throne was like the fiery flame. And his wheels is a burning fire. And this represents the chariots that what minister unto the heavenly father. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Speaking of the chariots. Thousands of thousands minister unto him. And this represents, um, when you go into Revelations 5, it talks about the 24 elders and the beast, right? Which represent what the angels and so forth. They minister unto Yahweh Shai and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. All right. And who, why were the books opened? Through Yahweh Shai. He was worthy to open the books. All right. So now we went to the description of the Heavenly Father, right? Now let's go to the description of His Son. Because there's a saying in the world, like Father, like Son. You sound just like your Father. You look just like your Father. Let's go to Revelations, Baba Kashat. Okay. This is Revelations, okay, the revelation of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord and Saviour, which the Most High gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, right? And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of the Most High and of the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach and all the things that he saw, right? So, this was signified to John the Revelator through an angel and the angels, it shows you the angels always help, they work on the minds of the hopeful elect, right? To give them revelations. He be a record of the word of the Most High and the testimony of Yahweh Shah Mashiach and all the things that he saw, right? And key thing, testimony, see the true prophets, they would have a testimony of Yahweh Shai, right? They're witnesses of Yahweh Shai. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Readeth goes into comprehend because you have Moabites, you have Edomite churches. They pick up this Bible, but they're reading, but they don't have the comprehension. They don't understand, right? Readeth goes into understand, and only a few was given what these words to understand. That's why when you go to Matthew 13 and 10, it says that it was given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it is not given. Okay. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Alright. The time of the end. Alright. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you. I don't usually read this bit. And peace from him which it is and which was Yahweh Shai and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, which represent the angels and these seven spirits. Them seven, seven, same, so like them same seven spirits have them same seven vials of destruction. Okay. And from Yahweh Shah who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the first to rise from the dead. Alright. And the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and have made us kings and priests, unto the Most High and his Father. That's through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. We are made kings and priests. Right? Unto the Father. And to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Yahweh Shai Kwadash Hayash Shankah. Yahweh Shai Kwadash Hayash Shankah. Right? And it says, let's jump straight to verse 8. I am the Alpha, speaking of Yahweh Shai, and the Omega. Okay, the beginning and the ending. The beginning and the ending say of the Lord Yahweh Shai, which is, which was, and which is to come the Almighty, right? I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, right? And in the kingdom of patience of Mashiach, was in the isle that is called Patmos, which is an island of what Greek, upon Greece, 
right? A deserted island. Okay, and that's spiritual because you still got some prisons today that are on islands. Okay, so if you escape, you're gonna have a very, very, very hard time getting away. For the word of the Most High and for the testimony of Yahweh Shemashak. So, John the Revelator was on this island because back then, years, two thousand years ago, you get locked away. It was a crime to be teaching it. You gotta understand what was happening back then. It was seen as treason against the Roman Empire to be teaching the scriptures. That's why a lot of prophets, they were hidden away. Okay? you got to understand what was going to... Look up history. Right? Look up history. And the, the capital punishment at that time was crucifixion. Look, that's why you also got to get into um, geographics and, and history. It's very important. Okay? It wasn't no easy thing. Oh, I believe it. No. That's why you had a lot of martyrs back at that them times as well. Okay? So let's go back to this um, verse, where was, we, where, was we, where was we, verse 10, right? And I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, right? And I heard behind me a great voice, all right? As of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. And what that see is right in the book, beginning with Adam, finishing with Yehabashai. Write in the book, so that's what we do, we write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia right Asia Minor unto Ephesus unto Smyrna unto Pergamos unto Tytera unto Sardis unto Philadelphia unto Laodicea and I turned to see the voice that spake of me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of seven golden candlesticks like, like unto one unto the son of man which would represent me right and the son, when you talk about son of man it just represents Adam okay clothed with a garment down to the foot so we had a long garment right that was our apparel back then okay wasn't wearing jeans and all that and girt about the paps with a golden girdle you actually had a golden belt right his head and his hairs were white like wool right his head and his hairs white white woolly afro as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire because Yahabashai liked him what drink right? and he wasn't a wine bibber that's what the Pharisees were calling him because what they were jealous quickly go to Genesis 49 alright just like some brothers in the truth they like a little bit of drink now and then you know what I'm saying Genesis 49 Baba Kishah, Baba Kishah, Baba Kishah and Jump straight to it. 12. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Okay. The whiteness of your eyes, the white, the outer layers of your eyes. Sometimes some brothers, they go red when you drink wine. Okay. And what do you think Yahweh was doing when he was supping with the disciples? You're telling me he wasn't drinking, he was drinking wine. Okay. At times. Okay. And his eyes, what, red with wine? Where was I? 1 verse 13. 1 verse 14. And his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass. And brass is like, some say it's goldily. It's the closest to brown. Right? So if you put anything in the furnace, but it says brass as if it burned in a furnace. <coughs> so if you put anything in a furnace, that's going to be naturally dark. It's going to be burnt. So... It was pretty much dark skin. All right, and his voice as the sound of many waters. That's why he talked with authority. He had a very, very deep, <coughs> stare voice. All right, and he had in his right hand seven stars, which represents yes the angels. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Excuse me, just a minute. All right, a sharp two-edged sword, and that sword ain't for buttering no grit. Okay, excuse me, it's, it's, it's spiritual, right? The two-edged sword is basically the words, okay? Which we are going to carry a two-edged sword. <laughs> it tells us that in um, I, what, Psalms 149, right? To what? Wreak vengeance upon the heathen, but we're not going to do that now, right? That's going to be in the kingdom. And a two-edged sword, right? 
out of his mouth, went, out of his mouth went a two-edged sword. Does this, this, does this mean a sword was coming out of his mouth? No. Right? The words. And how do we know this? Because when you read 2nd Ezra 13 and 13, it talks about them armies. Right? The armies that were going to try to come up against Yahabashai. Right? And he commanded the word and what came out? Fire. Right? By speech. You speak something and what? It happens. Right? That's the power of speech as well. Right? Out of his mouth went a two-edged sword. Let's go into what that two-edged sword is. Let's go to Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of the most is quick and powerful. So it has an effect on the minds of people. Everyone. Right? People get affected by this word. Right? And sharper than any two-edged sword, a physical sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And the joints and marrow. So it gets right up in people's what? Bones. It goes beyond the flesh. It gets right up in their bones. Right? And even beyond that, their soul. A son of soul. So this is why certain people, once they hear this word, a lot of people, they're never the same again. Especially our enemies, those that come up against us. They're never the same again. Some of them bug out. Right? Some of them can't sleep. This is how much this, this word has an effect on the minds of people. It has different effects on different people and is a discerner of the thoughts. It's able to discern what a person's thinking. Right? If a person has a uterian motive. Okay? If a person's a demon. Right? If a person's an upright man. If a person's seeking to repent. Right? And the intents of the heart. This goes in even to the intent of the heart. That's why Yahavashai was able to what? Read minds. Right? Knew what people are thinking. Know what they were about. Right. So now let's go to back to Revelations two and where was we where was we sixteen and his countenance, right, was as the sun shining in his strength. Right, key thing. Shineth in his strength. Okay, he had a very bright countenance. You go to Ecclesiastes, it says. And wisdom and knowledge make what is it? Blessed he that readeth. Hold on just a minute. Let me see if I can find it. I believe it's Ecclesiastes. Come on now. These people are dying for attention, man. <laughs> but that, that's what happens, bro. You can't you can't make this up. See, that's another lesson. That's another lesson. That's another lesson. Demons are actually inhabiting people, man. You know? That's why you got these people walking about like zombies, baby. <laughs> fear the Lord, fear the Lord. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 8. Who is as a wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Right? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. Right? So it's a man's wisdom, yes, that causes his face to shine. And the interpretation, the breakdown of a thing. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. So when you wake up to this truth, yes, there's a boldness you have. And yes, your face is changed. Your countenance, right, is completely changed. Okay. And it says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. All right. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. So John the Revelator passed out. Okay. And he saw Yahweh Shai. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold. So he revealed himself unto who? John the Revelator. And I lie, and I lie forevermore. I'm on, and have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which I have seen. That's why it was written down. The prophets were also known as scribes as well. So we also know not all the scribes are wicked. Right. And a scribe is someone that what keeps a note of what he saw. Right. And the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. Right? So this is what John the Revelator done. Right? And this was what the revelation of when you go to Revelations 1 all the way down to 20 of Yahweh Shai and his characteristics. Right? And we also went into what the revelation of the Most High. Okay? So with this lesson, I really hope this was edifying. And until the next time, Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.